Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I'm here today with Natalie Hi. because it is time for one of our favorite 15s and today we are talking about the disappearing four patch Star. star. So it's fun it's because very cute. It, for any of you who have done the disappearing four patch, this is it right here. It makes a very cool quilt in above, mm -hmm. you know, all by itself. But we've put legs around it and made it a star. And it's so fun, very popular. People love it. And we're going to show you how to do that. So to make this quilt, you're going to need two packs of five inch squares. And we have used Porch Swing by Ashley Colette Designs for Riley Blake. And it's a darling line, you can see. It's really pretty. Love the soft colors. Um, you're going to need some accent. That's one and a half yards. Accent would be this Oh, the green, green one. one. The green one is the accent because that's the legs. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the background, three and a quarter yards. And we just used this pale pink. We thought that would be fun to change it up a little bit. For your outer border, it's one and a half yards. And we used this green right here. And then this is our backing. And those little birds are so cute it's on there. It's really sweet fabric. Really darling. And so that's for that, you're going to need seven and a quarter yards. If you choose your own 108, it's going to be um, two and three quarter yards of fabric. So let me show you how to make this. You'll have fun watching the disappearing four patch. It'll be a good brain refresher for you because this is a really fun block to make. So let's it's get to that. It's very cool. <laughs> So now we're going to start with the middle of our block. This is the disappearing four patch. Mm -hmm. And this block was a little bit terrifying me to me to begin with because of the way we cut it. And you know, once you've finished a sewn small. block, oh, it feels a little scary. Yeah. So we're just going to grab four charms and I'm going to put them uh, together like this so that they just well, kind of mix two. up. There we go. Because these are, these are darker. These are going to be your darks, yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to sew this into a four patch, right? Good contrast. Mm -hmm. Natalie's better at that contrasty thing than I am. Mm. I'm, I'm really good with a pre-cut for sure. <laughs> All right. And give me two more. Yep. And make sure that iron's good and hot. I'm going to have to press this. It's ready for you. All right. So now I have these um, stuck together with mm -hmm. the little string. And so I'm just going to open them up. Make sure they're all still in the places I want them and fold this over and sew it a quarter of an inch down. We only need to match that middle seam. So just watch the middle seam and just make sure that your seam goes, you know, the top goes one way and the bottom goes the other. And then right. Natalie's going to press this. Now, one of the things that I want you to remember on this block is that we are making it from squares. So it's more about the shape than the size. So if we're using all five inch squares and, do, and, and creating this block, it, they're all going to turn out the same size. So if you have a stack of eight inch blocks, you could do it with that. You could do it with 10. I mean, this block works with anything. And also the measurement we're going to choose now you can also change that up. So this block you can do so many things to. So now that you have your four patch all together and pressed, it's time to cut. And it's a little scary to cut a block yeah. you've already made. But what we're going to do is we are going to lay this one inch, at, one inch out from the center seam. Mm -hmm. Now, could you put it an inch and a quarter? Yes. Could you put it two? You could change this up any way you want. But we're going to live on the edge today. We're cutting it at an inch. Well, the, so Natalie, I think that tiny is what looks really, really cool. Well, it is really cool. So Natalie, if you'll cut, wait, you well, know what? I this am, is a great time for I a, a rotating right mat. I am right-handed, so I'm going to have to move that to the other side. You can do whatever you'd like. I'm just so gonna lefties look. start from the left, righties start from the right. <laughs> there we go. But you I'll heard cut. it here. I will cut for you today. So we're cutting one inch away from that center seam, and we're just turning the mat. Now, if you don't have a rotating mat, if you'll just use one of your smaller mats, you can rotate that. But you don't really want to mess with this. You want it to stay with all of its pieces right where they belong so that they're all, they all stay in the same spot. And keep that lined up on the one inch every time you It's lined up right it, on yeah. the seam. Okay, one more time. We cut on all four sides. So now that we have this block all cut, we're ready to kind of mix it around and play with it. Okay. So I'm going to swap these two right here. Cool. And instantly you can see you have a square that's bordered now by another fabric. We're also going to swap these two. 
And then we're gonna take this little square in the middle and we're just gonna turn it one. Very just like cool. that. And that so looks awesome. it just it just looks so darling. It looks like yeah. you worked so hard. So let's go ahead and sew this top row together. You're and I would suggest chain piece these. I'm going to just I'm just gonna sew a row at a time. And I would suggest that you when you make these, cut one and sew one. Don't cut all your blocks. No, oh, you'll get and, them so mixed up and I think I would worry so much. You're not gonna want to kill me at the end of the day. So <laughs> so sew one, cut one. All right, so hand me that other block in that corner. Okay. And then I'm I'm going to hand these back to you and you can put them back in I'll, the I'll places press it that and they put go. it down. Okay. I can do that. And so this is the top row. Okay. And then I'm going to sew these little ones and be careful and don't move them from the place they they uh, they go. It's easy to get them mixed up. I do love disappearing blocks very much. And there's so many things you can do with these. All right, so then this one, is this right now? I think so, yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. So better to check than to rip, right? Yeah. I think that's a good little plan. Sure. All right, now I'm gonna sew these two on. You know, it's interesting because when you sew that middle part, it feels scary all of a sudden. But what you, what you have to realize is it's not harder, it's just smaller. But also know, it even feels a little scary to me. So if you wanna shorten up your stitch length a little bit, you can. But just, just be aware that, you know, that it's a little scary to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you'll go ahead I and will press, press that, that, I will iron these two together. Okay. Now you wanna watch on this because you do wanna match up those little seams in the middle. So I'm gonna start here nice and slow. And make and sure that my seams, all yep, points. all these little seams. And if they aren't going the way you want them, you can switch them. You can just make them go the way you want. I'm gonna make this guy go this way, and I'm gonna make this guy go this way. Okay, I'll repress that just after you're done stitching so we can do the next. And then you can fly on home. Okay. All right. So this one goes in, this one goes in. It's a good stay. time to press those and make those seams lay down nice and uh, nice and flat. There you go. Oh, I should have pressed it open, or not open, but back. Yeah? Yes, that okay. would be helpful. Just, yeah. <laughs> She's a good girl. I gotcha. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, so now when I put this back on, these should frame up the blue, the blue should frame up the gold, and it looks like we are good and to you go. you should have like your opposites, yeah? Right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this on here. Cool. And I'm going to flip this over because we've pressed these seams a certain way. I want them to lay that way. And they're tiny and enough you can, that you can, uh, you can actually, it would actually matter. You know, like sometimes if you sew on a seam and it flips, it's not it doesn't deal. really matter. But these are so close right there together. And so I'm going to line up this first seam and just sew a quarter of an inch right down. Okay. And then I'm gonna make sure this one is lined up and I'm watching to which way my fabric is pressed. Awesome. Make sure this is still lined up down here and fly on in. There we go. All right, now press that. Looks so good. This is one of those blocks that's so gratifying because you just make a four patch. You cut it one inch from the center seam all the way around. You sew it back. You know, you move the squares, sew them back together. And it looks and so And it looks like pretty. you worked so hard. It's just darling. I love it. So now all we have to do is make the star leg. And we're going to do the easy eight method. So what we want to do first is we want to grab our accent fabric, this green. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut a 10 inch strip and cut those into four 10 inch squares. So 10 inch strip and subcut into 10 inch squares. Then of the background, we're also going to cut a 10 inch strip and subcut that into 10 inch squares, but we also need these corner squares. So we are going to cut a strip here that is, um, let me see how big this is, four and a half inches. And that's, we're going to subcut those into four and a half inch squares because you need four, one for each corner on your star. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the legs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these two pieces 
and we're going to draw a line diagonally both directions like this and sew on both sides of that line. Now I have one here that is already done. You can see we've drawn the line and you can probably see better here. We've sewn on both sides of that line and now we're going to cut this and Natalie I'll have you cut this. Okay. And I like to cut um, horizontally and vertically first because there are no uh, there are no lines on that. And so she's going to cut like a right hander. Yep. Start from the right. And then she's going to turn it. Oh, and we could use our We could. We could use this again. But I'm I can do it. If this you ever way. get into a place where you're cutting, you know, back in on yourself, just stop. You don't want to get hurt, you know, you don't want to cut yourself. Am I good to cut on the lines? You're good to cut in on the lines. In between the two seams. Yep. And this is going to give us eight okay. uh, for four and a half inch squares. And we're gonna to need to be squaring those as well. All right. I can do that too. So now we have all eight of our half square triangles and Natalie's going to use the block lock ruler to square them and uh -huh. so they need to be so pressed to... and I'm going to press for you. I'll start with one. There you go. <laughs> and then you can do the rest. All right. And you can walk them through this, um, how you square these. So because this is pressed to the dark side, I'm going to have the um, writing on the background fabric and it presses up against the seam. And this is a four and a half inch ruler, which is exactly the same size that we need. So I'm just going to cut around the outside edges. That and should I be perfect. I think what I'll do is use this spinning mat because then I can just spin it around and cut the other side. Which will make life much easier. What? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> nice and pressed. Good job. <laughs> they are nice and pressed and square. Perfect. Yeah, oh, I already had some done. That, one got, <laughs> that one got done already. Oh, you're fast. They're perfect. And okay. then I have some that are sewn together as well. Oh, nice. So, um, so what we're going to do with these is we're going to so, take them and we're going to put them backgrounds together. That's how I remember it. Always backgrounds together like this. Okay. And that's going to make our legs. And we're going to sew four sets of these. And I have two sewn together. So you and I will just sew these two and we'll use the other two that I've already got some. Awesome. All right. Well, that's very cool. Did I surprise you? You did. <laughs> I thought I was going to be squaring for days. We actually enjoy squaring, don't we? I do. Yeah. It's kind you, of interesting. You not really so much. <laughs> Well, but I, it is super satisfying when I they do come like it out better and now they're that just I, so perfect. And I use the uh, disappearing, no, I use the, the clearly um, perfect the clearly slotted, perfect slotted trimmer. trimmer. And I like that one. And so it's not hard for me to square. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now, here's our little star. I can move Our that. little middle. And I'm going to move this over here so we can spread out a little bit. Okay. So we're going to put the one set of legs on there. One set of legs over there. One on the bottom and one on the side. Awesome. We're going to fill these in the corners. Okay. Like this. And then we're just going to row sew them. So I'm going to sew these two to either end of this, and we'll have Natalie uh, sew that to get, or iron press, that. I'll press press it. Yeah, I'm sewing, aren't I? <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. All right, here's one more. One more side. And then these I'm going to press to here and I'm going to match up this center seam right here with this center seam right here. And so that's going to be, uh, that's going to be lined right up there. And it gives you a good, um, you know, I, I like those places where you can stop and make sure everything is all squared up. So we're going to go here. And sew this across. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the other legs. I'm watching for the way this seam is laying down. I'm going to pull my seam to the other side so I get seams going both directions. Okay. And then I'm going to sew the corner squares on this last row right here. Okay. 
oftentimes when I'm making these, I'll sew the middle section first and then the top and the bottom. But it's really whatever works for your brain. But I am. You're ready for it. I'm ready. I know. Hang on. I just had a couple of seams to correct. There we go. There you go. All right, I'm going to sew this top piece on. Okay. And this makes a nice big block. So it, you know, it, a quilt goes really fast when you have large blocks. So if you need something in a hurry that looks like you worked really hard, this might be the one. That's true, it is real fast. All right, so now I notice I have a little bit more room right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm gonna flip it over because if you put your bigger piece to the bottom, the feed dogs will take in that fabric and it might be that I'm, my quarter inch seam is just a little bit off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come here. And then I'm just gonna make sure that this is nice and flat and lines up and that and the feed dogs will just take in that extra fabric and it will just be perfect. It's, that's, that works really well if it's less than a quarter of an inch of difference, right? Right. If it's much more than that, you might wanna take a seam in Yeah, somewhere. just look at your seam. But that worked great for me. Perfect. And I don't ever have a problem just flipping it over if I get along so far and I'm noticing that I have one side is bigger. Yeah. This one, this one's a little big too. So I must have just a little bit different seam allowance going on here. Sometimes also the, the reason for that is because on your half square triangle, you have fewer seams than you do here in the middle. When you have the middle section with all those little seams, it's gonna be just a tiny bit smaller than your half square triangle, even though they should, in theory, come out the same size. All right, but there we go. Because you have more seams here than you do here. It's a little bit smaller. It's, it's, that happens often when we're sewing just because it's it's more seams. So yeah. you have more room for error, there which isn't a big deal. It happens to lots of people, but that's why me. that's why sometimes though when you're trying to put things together in a block, if you have, you know, fewer seams on this side than you do on this side, it might not match up perfectly. Right. That's true. No big deal. But it's also also pretty fun to uh, to know that little trick. Yes. All it's right. super helpful. This is our block. Yes, it's so it's pretty. It's so pretty. Let me see how big they come out. So this is our block, it's mm -hmm. 16 and a half, and let's go look at the quilt and see how we did this. All right, so I have four set together, and this one begins with a sashing. Mm -hmm. The sashing is four and a half, and, uh, and so every row has a sashing either in the beginning or in the ending. And what that does is it staggers the stars so that they're not quite lined up. So we're gonna sew four of these together like this with a sashing in the beginning. And then we're gonna come along here and sew four again with a sashing at the end. And do you see how that offsets them a little bit? And it just gives a really fun look and character of the quilt. Can you yeah. line them all up? Absolutely. Can you sash them in cornerstone? Make it your quilt. This is your chance to make it your own. But we've got four across by one, two, three, four, five down. Nice big uh, five and a half inch border and it just comes together so fun. It looks so, so fun. great. And it just looks so good. So the quilt is 78 by 90. 78 by 90. And I want to show you this back on here because it has the, the, has the little, birds little birds on it. It's and it's so just so pretty. sweet. The quilt pattern that we've used is curly, twirly flowers. And it, I just thought it just went That's really fun. well with this quilt. And I like it because it's kind of circular when everything else, you know, feels a little angular. I like to put kind of a, a pattern with a yeah. little movement on it. So this is the Disappearing Four Patch Star, and we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you'll give it a try. It's a fun block, makes it look like you worked really mm -hmm. hard. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on one of our favorite 15 blocks from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. See you next time. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.